now we're here we're 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 live we're here we're live baby um this is great thank you i i uh you guys welcome back to devil's advocate with rosebud baker i am your host rosebud baker i don't know why i do that every week but i feel like you know it's a reset it's a way for me to get into it i want to immediately jump into this podcast i'm so fucking excited to have my guest I've done her podcast. You've heard her on Absolutely Not, her podcast, and uh, you've seen her on the Today Show, and you've seen her all over the place. You've seen her on Instagram for sure. She's one of the funniest people on Instagram. Um, Heather McMahon, everybody. Hi, honey. How are you? I'm clapping for you. I'm Thank you. Into the Ignore um, my so um, super, uh, I, I have a fully sunburned face. I like had one of those moments there where it's like, I'm just going to sit outside and get some vitamin D, but my flesh just caught fire. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> yes. I love it. Where are you again? You're in, uh, you're in the I'm South? in Atlanta. Yeah. I'm in, okay. I'm at my mom's house in Atlanta. Nice. With your hubs, your Beyonce. Yeah. Yeah, with, and, with, with the fiance, we've got a puppy, you got a puppy. Like we have so many parallels in our life right now. There's so much to talk about. I, first of all, and not that any of the listeners give a shit about this, but where are you guys at with potty training? Because I'm going to pull my fucking hair out and throw my head through a wall. Can I tell you when I'm so glad we're in a house and not an apartment in New York right now, because we escaped in New York at like yeah. the beginning of March. Yeah. Um, it's much easier. And we have my sister's dog here. So he's able to kind of like teach him a little bit. I mean, he's still having accidents. He's only like three months. So we're at the very beginning stages of it, but I couldn't imagine having a puppy train in an apartment. Forget it. Dude, I'm walking up and down a fifth floor walk up every fucking day, every no. fucking hour, just trying not to, trying to make it so that this dog doesn't shit all over everything I love. And it's not working. Okay. Yeah. None of it's working. And she's only three months too. And I don't know why, but I, I have this like expectation that I'm going to be able to fucking potty train a tiny yeah. infant. Yeah. Like she's so small. I... I could crush her eardrum with a stage whisper. Do you understand? Yeah. That's how small she is. Um, I think my fiance, Jeff, has completely the same expectations as you. They're unrealistic. He's like this Italian guy from New York, but he talks to, her, talks to our dog named Rigatoni. He's like, yeah. Tony, why are you barking? I'm like, the dog has <laughs> no fucking idea what you're saying. And two, yeah. Jeff, like, like he has full on, like he gets angry at the dog as if it's like a, a 35 year old man. I'm like, the dog is a baby. It's a, it's going to do baby things. Dude, I got to tell you, I'm with him on that one. I, it is amazing to me how fucking mad I can get at this puppy. It's right. amazing. Maybe I've been in New York too long. I think that's, well, that's honestly, any time is too long, but I have been here for 13 years now. And I talk to my dog, like she fully understands what the fuck I'm saying. Um, <laughs> And she doesn't, she doesn't at all. We're, we're working on it though. I do love her. I love right. her so much when, when they're sleeping, are they not the fucking cutest thing? I, I'm like, I love you yeah. more than life. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I don't know what the scientific response is that you want to hurt them because they're so cute. Like that's why I want to do it. Take Rigatoni's neck and snap it. Cause I just want to fight him. You know, yes. I don't know what, what is it? I don't know. Yeah. What that I is. don't know. I don't know. I feel that too. I feel that with Andy a lot too. I'm like, I don't know why, but I want to eat your flesh. All the so, time. How yeah. has it been? Cause you're newly engaged. You're doing the damn thing. How has it been like in quarantine with a lover? Well, I was going to ask you that because I, I wanted your take on it. I mean, you guys have been engaged for how long? We've been engaged. We got engaged January of 2019 and we're supposed to be getting married in September in Italy, but we've pushed it to next year because that's a shit show. But it's interesting because I've been on the road for literally the last year and I've yeah. always, we were long distance for, I mean, we've been together 10 years. So I've, we were long distance for like eight out of 10 years and our relationship yeah. just worked that way. Like, you know, I did my thing, he did his thing. When we came together, it was a blast. So it's definitely been an adjustment being together every waking moment for whatever, the last 60 days. Like I'm yeah. used to being like, hey, gotta go do some shows, gotta go on the road, gotta go to LA, peace. And we still like each yes. other. Yes, yes. And I, I feel the same way. Like when we, uh, when we got together, obviously we're both comics, so we were both on the road and it was constantly yeah. like I was getting in town, he was leaving town, I would be, and then every once in a while we'd be like, okay, we can't take any more time apart. Let's do a gig together. And like we'd, we'd like one of us would open for the other one. But I, 
since this started, we've been together, we've been in the same room for yeah. two months and um, it's actually okay. It's been okay. The fights that we've had, and I will, there have been fights. Right. They've always been about um, like a YouTube video that I wanted him to watch that he won't watch. <laughs> of course. It's yeah. always that. I'm like, I want you to listen to this cult leader who thinks he's an alien channeling from the future. I don't know why you can't get into it. Right. What's your problem? And then I'll be like, you're just a negative thinker. And he'll be like, you're listening to a man who says he's an alien. Uh -huh. And um, and I don't know why, but that's, I just don't, I don't understand why that's a problem. We've had our fair share of conspiracy theories in this household as well during quarantine. It's a I'm lot sure. of that. You know, like yeah. it's, we're de I'm definitely stirring the pot a little bit with the YouTube videos. Um, but for us, it's really been, and I never, I never thought I was a needy, emotional person, but I've realized through quarantine and I always kind of knew my love language is time. All I want to do is spend time with you. But since all we're doing is spending time together, I realize he spends so much fucking time on his phone texting these like Italian Goomba buddies and it drives me <laughs> nuts. I'm like, I just need three minutes of your time at night for you to put down your phone and acknowledge me, you know? Like, I, like yeah. I was like, you're addicted to your phone. And I know we're all just sitting around like dicking around, you know, on TikTok or whatever the fuck it you're is. Like, and like, that's coming from me. And I make <laughs> 75 Instagram stories a day. So right. you have a problem. Right. But you know what my justification no. for that is? I'm like, it's my job, okay? I'm a performer. Yeah. <laughs> I have to be doing this. Yeah. It's so funny. I get the same thing happens to me where I'll be on my phone for like four hours straight. We'll not look yeah. at him. He'll be talking to me. I can't even fucking hear him. And, uh, and then I'll look up and if he's on his phone, it, I, I get furious. Rage. Yeah. Rage. Where mm -hmm. I'm like, I cannot believe. I'll, I'll be like, we, you don't even want to hang out with me. And he's like, we've been in the same room for two months. Um, why? Why would I want to hang out with you? <laughs> like, yeah. And that is how it feels. And I, I mean, on the one hand, I'm, I feel like, cause the last time we talked was, I really think the last long conversation we had was when we did your podcast together. Yeah. Like we've talked a little bit, we've texted, mm -hmm. but, and I remember before I met Andy, I remember texting you and being like, bitch, I need you to set me up with someone. Like, I remember being like, <laughs> I need, I need to find someone to live my life with. I'm an adult. I'm sick of this. I'm on the road constantly. I need right. like a family, you know? Right. And um, I remember texting that to you and you being like, I'm on it. I'm on it. And then truly, I think it was the next week going to this wedding and hanging out with Andy and the meeting and like, well, we've met before, but just being like, huh. And then it was like on because it's just too... We're two alcoholics who don't drink anymore and we move faster than lesbians. Um, so Which I love. I love love. I'm here for it. I was actually so surprised because I remember it was like, yeah, we had that conversation. And then literally two weeks later, you're like, this is my fiance. I was like, go girl. Yeah, you I were thought like, you were what? joking. I thought you were joking. I literally was like, oh, Rosebud's doing a bit. And I was like, oh, yes. no, no, he's, a, he's in on it. Like either this is the biggest <laughs> April Fool's joke or he like, actually likes her. Yes. You guys are, let me ask you this. You, you've yeah. been, so when did you go out to Atlanta? I should let you know, we are neighbors. Um, your house has yeah. burned down. It's, okay, great. Um, just wanted you to know it is a pile of ashes. I figured, I figured as much. You don't, you don't have to come back if you don't want. Um, oh, well, honestly, I don't think we are. Uh, real yeah, talk. Really? Really. So we're at the point we've reevaluated. It only took like a total quarantine pandemic for us to realize like, why the fuck are we in New York? And it's not a sense like my, my fiance is a born and raised New Yorker. It's not like right. that, but it's just, we're at that point in our lives where all of our friends have left New York. Like literally like Rosewood, you're my only friend. All of my friends have left New York. Even all my other comedian friends who are, I think, you know, are on the road all the time. They, they either live in like LA or they live in another place where they're like, my day to day when I am home, I want to enjoy it. And I right. kind of had this like aha moment. And listen, New York will always have a soft spot, my, soft spot in my heart, but it's kind of the point yeah. where we were looking at like what we were paying for rent and the fact that we have 700 people in our building and like, we couldn't even go outside. I, that's when I yeah. had a real bug out moment um, is it was like the very beginning of March. I had just actually gotten back from Asia and I was yeah. like, 
And I had the moment where I was like, I was less afraid of everything that was going on and being like cramped in with people in Asia than I was in New York. And I looked yeah. at him and I was like, if I can't open my windows for the next three months, I'm gonna lose my mind. Hold on, my yeah. cat needs to get in. Hold on, stay yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. No yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Delta. <laughs> okay, you. she talks, I have a talking cat, so just deal with it, it's fine. Oh, good, that's yeah. great. Yeah, I have a talking dog and she, um, she's a slut. So uh, I am, so when you decided to leave, were you at all like worried about, like, did you contact your landlord? Did you, did you end your lease? Did you hold on no, to it? What's so the, we just, we bugged out, like literally yeah. got a bug out bag and actually it sucked. It was, I mean, whatever, everybody's going through the shit. It was on my birthday. I looked at Jeff and I was like, Jeff, you know, it was when everything was starting. This was March 15th. They were like, we're going to shut everything down. And we'd already yeah. been quarantined in our place for like a week. And I said, this is our chance. We got to go. And we got on a flight and we were the only people on the flight. And we quarantined at my godmother's house, who was three doors down from my mom for like two weeks. Because my mom's in her yeah. 70s. We were all yeah. good. And then we came over here. But we've just kind of had that moment. It's like, I'm always on the road or I'm always traveling. Like, I'm never home anyways. I slept in our apartment in New York the last year. We totaled like 36 nights. Like, what are we doing yeah. paying $4,200 for, you know, an apartment? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's nuts. Are you going to like hold on to it and rent it out? Or are you going to like, uh, no, cause we don't own it. It's not no, worth I it. Think, yeah. That's what I think we're, we were out in LA and we were like, okay, so I signed my lease for this place for another two years. Yeah. Literally the week, I think it was a couple days before the stay at home order took place. Right. And I was like, fuck. So we came back here. Um, after our sublet was up in LA and right. now we're here and we're just like, do we buy a place? Do we go to Maine? Like what's it? It's so, it's such an insane time, but I feel like we were being displaced and with all of this going on. Yeah. Both of us were just like, we just want to be around our things. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. and that was kind of the thing for me. I, I was like, I just want us to like move in together and like make a home together even if all of this insane craziness is going on around us, at least we'll have like the illusion of something permanent because that is the thing that I, and I think you probably, I mean, we both have dead family members. So yeah. we both kind of struggle with the whole, like, I, I mean, I'm, a, I'm, this is a, I'm an, I'm assuming, but that we both struggle with the idea of like something just ending immediately yeah without any warning and like having no answers as to what's happening next. And like what, cause you know, it's yeah. like when you go through death, it's, it's funny. You feel like that would be something where you um, kind of come to accept it. But for me, I have the, I, on the one hand, I totally accept death. Like when death happens, I'm like, right. Okay. People die. But when it comes to the day to day shit, all of a sudden I'm like, no, no, no. There can be no uncertainty whatsoever in terms of the plan or the, um, you know, where I live and the things around me. Like I need right. that illusion of permanence. Uh, so I hear you. So Jeff, I feel like Andy and I are a lot alike and you and Jeff are like the same person. Um, <laughs> cause... I'm an Italian man. Yeah, you're, you're just like, <laughs> like a 6'3 Italian man from Westchester. You know, yeah. it's funny. I have moved around, like, I go New York, LA, Atlanta. I make this little triangle. I literally haven't, haven't lived anywhere since college longer than, like, four or five, four or five years. And yeah. um, so for me, I'm like, great, new challenge. And I think, I mean, like, candidly, I think what we're going to do is take over my mom's house because we have this house in Atlanta and my mom's, you know, widowed. And I'm like, listen, mom, we'll all live together. We'll figure it out. I don't know what's going to happen. Am I going to have kids in the next couple of years? Do I, you know, I'm really realizing, especially after my dad died, you know, I moved back home to Atlanta originally to move in with my mom. And now that we have this pandemic situation, I was like, you know, my mom's in her 70s. She's in great health, but we came down here literally just to keep an eye on her, just to make yeah. sure she wasn't like bugging out. And yeah. now I think, think Jeff's just like your quality of life. It's like, what do you want? You know, but I, I'm all, I need to go and I always need to be moving around, but I'm like, if I can make Atlanta home base, I travel anyways, I can have a qual good quality of life when I come home and then be wherever when I need to be for work, you know? I don't know. That's so smart. Yeah. That's Look so at us smart. having such an adult conversation. I know. I know. It's funny. Like this whole thing has kind of made people grow up like very quickly. Yeah.
But you know, you know? we talked about this on my podcast when we, you were talking about, you know, going through death. I think this is such, this whole pandemic is so fucking alarming for people, but it's mostly alarming. And I'm sure you've witnessed this, your friends who have never had anything happen to them ever. You know, we talk about yeah. unless you'd had some, a family, a very close family member die. I'm talking about grandma, grandpa, they're still very important, but like your mom, your yeah. dad, your sister, your brother, until you've had that experience, then you, you haven't really lived truly. I'm like, you have to experience yes. death to experience life. So yes. I feel like, and that's what Jeff Rosebud, let me tell you straight up. He looked at me, he had a, he'd never had a panic attack. We were like headed to the airport in New York. He's like, I don't want to, he's like, Heather, you know, my biggest fear was death. I'm like, no fucking shit, Charlie. It's everyone's right. fear. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't love spiders, but I don't want to die, Jeff. How, do, I, like, <laughs> how yeah. do you deal, how do you deal with that when he says stuff? Like I said, I'm really, I'm really bad about um, comforting people. Like I'll be like, Andy says, I get this like softball coach energy where I'm like, just be better, you know? <laughs> and, um, I, and I just, I don't know how to like comfort someone who, when I'm like, there's worse shit that could happen. You know, well, I, I'm a little tough love these days. Since my dad died, I'm very tough love. I'm like, are you alive? Are we going to make it? Quit being a baby back bitch, get on this fucking plane <laughs> and then wear your mask and we'll Clorox your balls when we get home. Like, what else do you want me to tell you? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what else to say. I love the Chili's reference all that you pulled just out of the fucking blue. Out of the big, wide blue air. You just pulled a reference from fucking Chili's. And I'm not ashamed of it, okay? <laughs> Andy, yeah. are you hearing all of this? He's my, my soon-to-be hubs just walked in. Um, Have y'all done any wedding planning? I'm behind. On all of it. No, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not having a wedding. I'm just gonna yeah. go to City Hall. That once yeah. it opens, that's sort yeah. of the plan. I feel like, I. I mean, you are a Southern Belle, so it feels it would feel wrong for you to not have a wedding. I. I'm like, if Heather McMahon doesn't have a wedding and isn't like posing in a lunge, on <laughs> at the altar, I don't know what. I'll. I will doubt the fabric of reality. But I'm honored me, that I'm you like, said that. I can't do it. I. I just can't like. I. I think the attention makes me uncomfortable, which is weird because my whole life is just begging for attention. Right. Um, I've literally made a career out of it. And, uh, but I don't know, I, I haven't done it. Have you, have you been um, doing any wedding planning or? <laughs> you know, we had everything set and I had done it and then I was on tour. So I just kind of like forgot about it. I am surprisingly and not that bride being like, oh my God, I can't wait for all the details. I think I'm on the entertainment side of being such a people pleaser. I literally, we had to like, push the date back to next summer, no big deal. I'm like, all right, I call my wedding planner in Italy. I'm like, all right, Jill, we gotta like set off fireworks. We gotta have grandma pop out of a cannon. I just want people to have such a fucking good time. I could give a yeah. fuck about how I feel. To the point yeah. where my friends are like, you need to enjoy it. Cause we've had to change the yeah. date. And so I'm calling everybody and their grandma like, hey, is this day work for you? And my matron of honor was like, Heather, just pick a fucking date and everybody will show up, you know? Yeah. Like, just do it. Who gives a fuck if they can't come? I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's really surprisingly, not that I'm a martyr, but it hasn't been about me. It's been about, I just want to fucking party. <laughs> yeah, no, I can see that. I could see your wedding just being like an adult summer camp fucking yeah. extravaganza. Like, <laughs> and that, if anything, I do want that. I want to have a big fucking party right. where all my friends are there and we're just dancing and everyone's getting hammered, you know, except for me and Andy, but we're yeah. like four alcohol down their throats vicariously yeah. that sort of thing just really gets me like I would love that um yeah and everybody really it was funny when people were like are you gonna cancel your wedding I'm like no we're not fucking canceling this shit Jeff and I are gonna go to city hall anyways or get married or resume just legally because yeah. at this point we've been together 10 years I'm like you and I are on the same life insurance policy I need to just make sure I'm gonna get a payout if you catch something you know what I'm saying right yeah that's now where is I'm the at time. Now, now is, is the, the time, time. um <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. I do, let me ask you this. When this whole thing started and you were like, uh, and you were hearing about it and everybody was freaking out, what was your initial reaction? What was your first feeling about it? As someone who has been through a fair amount of like, you know, uh, loss, mm -hmm. um, what was your initial reaction to it? I, it was weird. I had two, two modes. I, my first mode was like, okay. This is it. Um, as a young Christian, I have prepared for this. Jesus is on his way. We will be <laughs> redeemed. <laughs> like I kind of got into like pack the bags, 
put on your breastplate of righteousness, armor We're of We're all going home. Gucci gang. I'll see you in a minute, dad. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. like, I really kind of got in, like, a prayer warrior moment. And then the other side of me, yeah, was just kind of like, okay, so someone's going to die. I'm probably going to know. Like, I literally statistically started to work it out. I was like, okay, I'll probably know five people that'll die. All right. Then I'll, I'll, we'll deal with it. I don't know. It was weird. And my dad's death was about, it would be five years this Christmas. So it's still a little fresh in the sense that I'm, I'm not the exact person to call right after someone dies. Cause I'm going to go, or like, I have friends now that have said, oh, my mom got cancer. And I immediately go to, well, she's not going to make it, but I'll be here for you. You know, like, yeah. I don't know what yeah. to say. Yeah, that's yeah. so funny. That's exactly how I feel. Whenever somebody contacts me and they're like, I, did, I got sober and I'm like, okay, well, you'll be relapsing. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, that's like immediately, they're like, I, my life's so much better without alcohol. I'm like, okay, talk to me in six months. Um, right. You know, when your boyfriend's left you and you have no coping mechanisms whatsoever, we'll see if you haven't gone back. Uh, of course. But I get it. Yeah, I the same thing happened to me. I was just like, all right, well, we're all going home. We're all going to. Yeah. Just start singing your hymnals because it's time. <laughs> like literally, Rosebud, I swear to God, Jeff, we were like at the terminal at JFK and, or no, it was at LaGuardia and, and Jeff looked at me in the Delta Sky Club and he was like, I just, I don't want to die. And I was like, get your fucking shit together. Chug this bourbon, get on the fucking plane. I put us in the first two seats, wipe it down Clorox and quit being a bitch. And he was yeah. like, okay, you know. <laughs> That is I'm so good funny. in a panic. I'm very good yeah. in a panic. I, I have yeah. noticed, like, I, I kind of get very camp counselory. My day-to-day -day life, I am so type Z. I'm like, chill, bro, whatever, do your thing. Everybody's cool. But when it comes yeah. to those kind of situations, I'm like, let's go. I don't Dude, know why. Same. I think it's like, you have, you remember the way it felt when you were going through that. Yeah. And when you were going through the loss of your dad and you just, and for same here, I'm like, I remember how quickly that shit happened and yeah. how off, how, uh, how much it took me off guard and how it just like, it's a kick to the stomach. And I remember that feeling so fucking well of hearing that my sister died and feeling like I got kicked in the stomach. And I think my stomach has not relaxed since then. And that's why I have abs now. That's all oh, it yeah. is. I, I think oh, it's sure. all, I've, I've got a constitution that I, I it's like I was, raised on a ship you know what i mean it's like you can't fucking push me over i I'm i think mine went to my train. traps my neck is just getting wider and thicker like literally <laughs> if you can see on zoom i could i could join the nfl like yesterday and yes. literally jeff was like god damn he's like are you working your traps i'm like no this is just where i hold all of my <laughs> deep pent-up emotion um, i know it's like yeah. my, my jaw and my abs are just like all day and it's like that's and that's where i'm at and i feel like i it's weird because in New York, I, both of us flew during this whole yeah. um, shit. And w was everybody, did you feel like you were on a ship in the 1930s? Like when you told people that you flew? Because everybody that I told was just like, oh, how was it? And I was like, you know, they've had these around. Yeah. This is, planes are a common thing. Um, but everybody acted like they've never flown before. All of a it wasn't, it wasn't that I didn't get the, like, how was it? It was more like people were like, I can't believe you did that. I'm like, we were oh, you got the judgment. The car. I got a little bit of judgment. Well, it wasn't even a judgment. It was, or it was just more like, I guess it was a touch of how was it? But it was also like, you know, was that a good idea? And I'm like, yeah, great idea. Great yeah. idea. And I just took the antibodies test. I took the blood antibodies test because I got really sick when I came back from Asia. When I thought it might have been a sinus infection, like I was supposed to do another thing on the Today Show, I called out. I was like, I can't fucking give Jenna, Jenna Bush Hager and fucking Hoda Kahn be the damn coronavirus. Like I literally had just flown in yeah. from Asia. And, um, and I was there at the peak of it at the end of January. And yeah. it, was, it was really interesting. When I got back, I was like, oh, sure, I, I'm, maybe I had it. And then I just got this blood test back. And I'm like, you're negative. And I'm like, fuck. Dude, I don't know what's happening. That I haven't been freaked out until I got my negative test back. I'm like, so, you know, do I need to like, I don't know, wear fur every time I go no, out? No, you know what it is? I genuinely think that um, actually what it is is I have a friend who had confirmed, definitely had the coronavirus, like was tested positive for it, went to get the antibodies test and it got a negative result. And then he was like, no, 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 retest me. And they retested him again and it came back positive. So oh. these tests are literally 50% accurate. I mean, right. they're like, oh yeah, everybody's getting the test. I'm like, no, 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 the testing is not accurate. Like 
yeah, we need testing. But also I think what happened was the demand for testing was so incredible that they came out with a test that wasn't fucking accurate to kind of quell the national um, insanity that was happening. I realized through all of this, I've ever given myself enough credit because I surround myself with a lot of like, you know, really Ivy League people just because those are the people in my family and I went to the University of Mississippi. So yeah. I'm not exactly <laughs> Mensa. Um, but I, <laughs> I realized that people that like my other friends, I'm like, nobody has, even the scholars have no fucking idea what's going on. So I feel a lot better about myself. I'm like, literally CNN doesn't have a fucking clue. Fox doesn't have a fucking clue. MSNBC, no fucking clue. No, fucking no one clue. has an idea. We don't even know if Kim Jong-un is fucking alive or not. So as far as I'm concerned, that no one is, has an idea. And then and then you have like, okay, and this is the part where I start getting a little conspiracy theory-ish, yeah, and I apologize because it. I don't want to sound like a fucking Republican, but I, all the doctors that have like made any kind of strides in this have all of a sudden popped up and just been murdered. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, okay, so <laughs> okay. what the fuck? are we supposed to do or or think when everybody that is making any kind of progress with this is just dead the next day. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right? I, I can get down a dark wormhole of conspiracy theories. And then on the other side of it, I'll also flip the coin. And I think this is just a coping mechanism for me to be able to like sleep at night. Yeah. I'm like, okay, but we had the Spanish flu a hundred years ago. This shit like this just happens. Like this is our Spanish flu. We'll be good in yeah. like six months and then we're gonna be groovy. My thing is this whole like, then you're like, you gotta get the vaccine to get on a flight. And I'm like, I don't want it. I don't get the flu I shot, know. you know? I, I know, That's I don't crazy. wanna, I don't wanna like, I don't wanna get the vaccine. I don't wanna get, I, I feel like nothing is like sure yet. I, I yeah. just like, I don't wanna be fucking experimented on. And exactly. I don't wanna be like, yeah. I'm like, sorry, I don't wanna be a fucking lab rat. Like, mm-hmm. what if you, what if you do this to me and all of a sudden I'm purple? What if I'm right. like, I, you know, what if you do this to me and all of a sudden my fucking hand falls off? I don't know what the fuck you guys are doing, you know? And, and I don't the, trust a government mm-hmm. that's being run by a man who is clearly, I mean, has like Alzheimer's or bipolar disorder or what the fuck, I don't know what the fuck is up with him, but yeah. he's out of his mind. And, uh, you know, I, I just feel like everything is, this is end times for sure. Um, yeah. And I'm, Truly, I think I'm fine with it. Like I, I moved back to the middle of it, <laughs> just, just to be here. You know what I What's mean? What's the vibe in New York right now? It is um, honestly the same as it was with more parking. It doesn't right. feel like anybody's that freaked out. Like sometimes we, we were in Target the other day and Andy stepped too close to a woman and she did one of these where she shoves her arm out and she goes back there, back, you know, like, like yeah. putting a, uh, fucking, what is this called? Uh, uh, like a, like a, a spell, a spell. Yeah, Jesus spell. Christ. Or a Spider Man um, a little bit too. Yeah, a little. Yeah, she did one of those, <laughs> and um, and I was filled with so much rage. I almost like jumped in her face and was like, "Make us!" Like I, yeah. so there's a little bit of that, but I, for the most part, it feels just as stressful as it always was. Yeah. And I don't. I mean, I'm lonely. That's the thing. It's like, but I thought somewhere in the back of my mind, and I knew if you'd asked me this and while I was in LA, hey, do you think you're going to be lonely when you go back to New York? I knew that I would be on a conscious level, but in my gut, I felt like, eh, I won't be. Right. And it truly is. It's just as lonely here. I, what I really want to do is get in a car and just drive from town to town until this is over, just to keep some fucking action going in my life. And I think you've been on the road all year. I've been on the road all year. We both know that there's, that does something to you mentally. Yeah. Like it fucks with your sense of time. It fucks with your circadian rhythms. So in a lot, in a lot of ways, you were already living this life before it happened. You know, you were already living kind of a quarantined life. Cause you were just, I mean, I don't know how you are on the road. You seem to get out a little bit more than I do, but I would just well, be in my fucking hotel room. Well, my schedule was fucking brutal. Like we yeah. were, I was doing, I think like in November and December alone, I did something like 30 shows and like 28 different cities or something, something nuts. 
just yeah. in those two months. So it was brutal. And the funny thing is, it's like, you know, I, I don't know. It, yeah, it was brutal. But I do like to get out a little bit. I've also just have been a traveler. Like, I'm a little bit of a nomad, a little bit of a gypsy, if you will. I know we're yeah. not supposed to use that word anymore, but fuck it. Like, I yeah. um, I like to go and I like to get out. So it's been funny. But even being home, and I don't know if you're feeling this, especially as like an entertainer, the amount of fucking pressure that people are like, where's your book? Finish your TV show. Do this, do that. And you're like, God damn, I never get a chance. Even when I'm home, I'm home for like two days. And then I basically do laundry, bleach the kitchen. And I, then I have to go back out on the road. So for yeah. me, I haven't even had, like everyone's like, I'm watching a thousand Netflix shows. And all this shit. I'm like, I'm working every fucking day. Like, cause Dude, people same. expect me to come up with shit. You know? Same. I'm like, I'm, I, in the middle of all of this, I'm like, okay, I'm doing two podcasts. Mm -hmm. One of them I was releasing every single day. We just cut back to doing three a week. I'm doing this podcast. I'm writing a show. I'm yeah. pitching another show. Yeah. I'm trying to, and it's like, there's a lot of shit that's that I'm still doing. I'm just doing it from inside my house while trying to tr potty train a fucking demon gremlin who wants to shit on my life, my puppy. We're literally living the exact same life. Like I know, no and we've always, yeah. it's so weird. We have a lot of fucking, you were born one day before me. Yeah. We are, we have a lot of similarities in our lives. It's like yeah. very strange to me because we don't talk that often, but I feel very connected to you. Um, I feel very connected to you. And for people who don't know, we met actually at this like shitty pilot audition. And the funny thing yeah. was, Rosebud, I felt like your initial energy, I was like, this is my kind of bitch. But I didn't know at first, I was like, I don't know if she gets me because what I realized I was in one of those rooms with so many other comics where it's just everyone trying to be on. And I was yeah. like, I like this bitch because she's low key. And I was like, this is the kind of energy I need. And then I think we could paired off to the side and I was like, okay, you're the only fucking normal one here. I can't entertain these yeah. people. Yes, yeah. Yes. That yeah. Was, and it was so funny because I'd never, we'd never like crossed paths before that. We hadn't mm -hmm. like, you know, and you were just moving to New York and you moved yeah. literally next door to me. And we found right. out about that. And I walk my dog in your fucking neighborhood and get yelled at by the security all the time yeah. um, because they don't have the tags, but it's fine. They're, they're nice men. Um, but yeah, we're very like, we're very, uh, I don't know. It's almost like bizarro world in yeah. a way, you know, you know do you miss we're, being, maybe we're dead and we don't even realize it, you know, maybe I don't even know. Our, it's, I found this, to Rose, that I found would be this such a bitch if we were dead and we were still afraid of dying. That's hell. When I got really dark into like my conspiracy theories and then I have to snap out of it and see, I drink, so I just start drinking. Um, yeah. And also there's so many people that are gonna come out of this full blown alcoholics. Like, I don't oh, know yeah. what your take on it is, but I'm like, everyone's abusing something right now. Absolutely, dude. I, the fact yeah. that I am, I was, I tweeted this yesterday. I was like, I'm so glad I got sober 12 years ago so that I could lay on my couch, not be able to tell one day from another and not be able to work. I'm like, I'm literally, exactly where I started yeah. when I got sober. I'm like, why? I'm yeah. feeling everything. It's like being sober through this is the equivalent of uh, not wearing a mask on a plane. It, yeah. it, you can feel it all and it's a nightmare. So anybody who is using, who is like abusing something right now, it, the amount of people who are just like overdosing, I'm like, more power. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Let's yeah, go yeah, for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's definitely been interesting. I, dude, you know, and I finally had like, I had to like force myself to exercise. I'm not exercising. I don't give a fuck about like weight loss during quarantine. I'm like, no, if I don't do it, it my anxiety is so crippling. I'll just lose my fucking mind. You know, yeah. I quit watching the news. I love, sorry, Katie Couric, love you, bitch. But it got to the point where her little updates during like the peak of everything were so negative. I was like, I can't, I don't need to know the numbers. I just got to stop. You know? I know, I know. Uh, Michael Che said something about like, this isn't a fucking telethon. You can take yeah. the death toll down. Like, Thank God, yeah. It really feels like that because it started to feel like, are we, do you guys think we're winning something? Right. Like, right. what <laughs> What exactly are you fucking doing to like help people right now? And I'm so, I'm, I'm fed up with, I mean, I've been fed up with the media for a long fucking time. Mm -hmm. I think I even talked about it on your podcast, honestly, yeah. where I was like, I can't take it anymore. Yeah. Um, but so more power to you. Do you feel better having not watching the news? Yeah. Once I finally was like, all right, I'm doing everything I can. I can't, like, if I get sneezed on at the grocery store, that's on God. And, you know, I'll see you in a minute, dad. Like, I don't know what else to say. But again, yeah. I think I had that kind of like, 
all right, this is serious. My biggest thing was just protecting my mom. My sister had a complete fucking meltdown because my sister was like, we've already lost one parent. We can't lose another one right now. So we've been like crazy anal with my mother. But then you're also like, what the fuck? And then I got that antibodies test and I was like, well, I don't know what to believe anymore. At this point, like Jeff was not, he smoked cigars. He was not smoking cigars to like, you know, protect himself. And now I'm like, light it up, you know, pour a glass of wine. I don't know what the fuck to tell anybody anymore. I Dude, don't. I was vaping. I was vape. I probably quit vaping for like two days while I had it. And now I'm like back. I was the rest of the time I had it. I was just vaping. I was like, I don't even fucking care. I'm not going to die like this. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die jeweling. Like I've always said I would. And, th- and I'm going to die fucking. And I just, oh, that's a question I have for you. Yeah. How's the fucking, are you guys, are you guys like getting it in? Are you, or are you, is it just like, no. Cause I have gone back and forth where like, I'll go four days where I'm like, insatiable and then uh, like a week where I'm just like don't fucking touch me that's pretty much the same it the first two weeks because Jeff was first experiencing his first bout of like anxiety and panic attack there was just no libido because we were in fight or flight we were just you know like watching the news and every night I we'd have to like meditate together to like fall asleep it was more like nurture cuddle and then we then we got over that then we started fucking again and then um about two days ago I burned um my taint at Starbucks so I'm recovering from an injury right now. So how did you, how did you, how the fuck did that happen? How Dude, did you I'm not even making this up on the steamer? No, I'm at the drive through and I was picking up my mom who drinks a fucking tall black coffee, no milk, anything in it from uh, Starbucks. My 72 year old mother does. So I'm yeah. getting her like a bagel and they have this new thing, a new system, a touchless system coming out of Starbucks where they basically took like, imagine a regular coffee mug. They put the tall coffee in the coffee mug. So the guy holds the coffee mug out, then you pull your coffee out. Well, the lid wasn't on. So I get it. I pull it up out of his coffee mug, put it into the car and the lid wasn't on. So they just literally started spilling over. I dropped the whole thing. It All the hot coffee goes right into my grundle. I'm not even getting my um, second degree burns on the backside. Like, you know where your thong disappears? That's yes. on my body from Starbucks. Like I'm like oh that woman at McDonald's God. who fucking burnt her pussy on the coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy <laughs> shit. I know. Oh my God, Heather. I know. Dude, I, I, it's I'm weird. Vagina, like, thank God it's the back, but it's still not good. So I'm, I'm having fine. to stay low key for a couple Listen, days. if the back of your pussy's burned, you have every right to just <laughs> sit on an ice pack for three weeks. All right. Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I personally, I didn't know this. I have been getting a rash. All right. I've always gotten like stress rashes, like on the back of my head. It's like almost like eczema or psoriasis or something. Yeah. Like right under my hair on the back of my neck. Um, that started happening at the top of my ass crack. Fuck. Okay. Okay. So now if I take my thong off, it just looks like I have a diaper rash. Yeah. I, look like I have an actual baby's diaper rash on my asshole. And yeah. it's, um, it's not great. It's not, uh, it's not the sexiest thing in the world. I mean, it's I also, really- When you have a burn yeah. or a rash, don't you feel like it's an infant's injury? It sort of feels like I'm an actual infant, but I'm a grown woman and it's embarrassing. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I really felt like an infant when I had to lay down on the bed and Jeff had to literally take aloe vera and medical grade like burn stuff and put it in my grundle. And I was like, yeah. I don't, I can't reach it. I just need your help. I like, I felt- like a giant baby. And I, it was just everything about it. I was like, um, do you love me? Just like, of course I love you. He was dying fucking he's laughing like wiping, the whole time. He's yeah. holding your feet mm-hmm. above your head and he's mm-hmm. like, of course I love you. And what I is- was just, my soul left my body. I was done. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even fucking like Starbucks. I can't. Yeah. This is too fucking funny. And I feel I'm bad like, for the guy who was working. Like, I feel bad for, he was an idiot, but I also feel bad. Like, I don't want him to lose his job. And I was in this weird space where I was like, I have to tell people what happened. And now Starbucks has reached yeah. out and I'm trying to legally figure everything out. But I'm like, I literally had to go to the doctor because the coffee fucking burned my Grendel. Like, I don't know what else yeah. to say. Yeah. It's Crazy. like, you guys are trying not to, this is, this is part of what annoys me about this whole thing is like, you have people trying to avoid the coronavirus and causing like just chaos. Like I had a friend, I was supposed to hang out with a friend about four days after I got back from New York, we were going to do like a social distancing hangout. And I told her, I made the mistake of telling her that I went to go get my hair cut, like prohibition style. And she was like, that seems like a really bad idea right now. I just feel like it's not like good. That's not a good idea. And I didn't say anything because people are afraid. And I know that it's like, 
it is what it is. But part of me was just like, I was just on an airplane. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, I was just taking a flight. Like why, what? Cause when people are afraid, the first thing that goes out their fucking head is like rationality and like yeah. reason. And I feel like, I almost feel like people who have been through a lot of loss have kind of an edge on those who haven't because we're like able to kind of keep a rational mind through all of this because it's like, yeah, it's not a problem until it's a problem, you know? Yeah, and it's been interesting seeing what people pick and choose during this time. It's like, you know what I mean? It's very interesting. It's like, oh, you went to Whole Foods with no mask, no gloves, and you were there for three and a half hours, but now you don't want to sit down in my lawn. You know, I don't know. It's very, it, it's been very interesting. And I mean, well, listen, we fight the battle. My mom every day has been like, you need to fucking get your, your roots done. Like I'm trailer trash. Like <laughs> my roots are so bad. It's so embarrassing. It's so not Mine were so bad too. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't look at yeah. myself. Well, and I'm like low key texting my girl and she's like, hey, I'm at my beach house. But when I come back, like, do you want me to come over? I've been quarantined with my husband and my kids. And I'm like, yeah, but low key, like, am I going to get fucking drugged through the mud on the internet? Like, I don't know what the fucking call is. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's crazy. It's like a time where I, I was saying, like, I'm more afraid of uh, going, I, I'm more afraid of getting yelled at for going outside than I am of actually getting the coronavirus again and fucking dying of it. Like at this point, that is how, uh, that's how I'm starting to feel. And that is, I think, a little insane. But I do think once this is, I think it will pass. It'll be over at some point. I'm really sad that you're not coming back to New York, though. That's like such a bummer. I know. We just kind of looked at everything. We were like, looked at how much we were paying for rent, all of this shit. And we were like, this is insane. Yeah. Like, it's just nuts. And I'm really like, we don't have any friends in New York. Everyone's like, all of our favorite restaurants left New York before like, pandemic my faith I have one restaurant that I still go to I'm like I kind of had that aha moment where I was like all of our good the good shit about New York is starting to fade away because it's become so commercialized and everything and I'm like my mom and pop shit in my neighborhood isn't popping off anymore you know I'm yeah. like I don't know yeah. just to me the thought of like because I'm always on the road I want somewhere quiet to come home to I and I've always been a city person I'm like I want to be on top of everything in people's business I love that shit and now this yeah like, I kind of like being in Georgia and like Hearing a river in the back. <laughs> I never yeah. thought I'd be that person. I know? know. I know. There's something about it. There's something that's like kind of, I, and I think you've been in cities for so long that it's like, and it's like, you're still in Atlanta. You know what I mean? It's not like you're moving to fucking nowheresville. But it's been funny. You know, we've had all this shady shit that's been going on. Like our governor's an asshole. We had that, that, um, horrific shooting of that unarmed black man, Ahmad yeah. in Georgia. And people are like, What's going on with your state? I'm like, literally, y'all, that's like California. That's like saying you live in Los Angeles and everywhere yeah. else in California is like conservative and you live in the big city where like none of this shit, you know, right? nobody believes right. that shit. So it's been interesting dealing with like that kind of shit where everyone's like, your governor's an idiot. Y'all are killing everyone. I'm like, I'm not, I'm in Atlanta. You know, yeah. I don't know what like, to tell you. I'm just trying to protect my mother for fuck's sake. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. I mean, how's your mom reacting to it? Is your mom doing okay? I know she's trying to break out every three seconds. She's over it. She's like, I mean, I'm over it. I'm like, everyone's fucking over it. Like, I don't, yeah. like, no one's enjoying this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Redecorating the whole house, picking apart my flaws. You know, it's been a real, um, it's been a judgy, very judgmental house. But are you, fight, are you fighting at all with her? Or are, you, are you just like, whatever, mom? Well, she doesn't think that I have a real job, even though she's come to a bunch of my shows <laughs> and I have my podcast and I'm like, I'm with like you, I'm pitching and writing a show. And so I'll be in like these Zoom calls or like Zooming podcasts and she'll come in and she's like, are you on the podcast? Are you in your Zooms? You doing your Zooms? I'm like, <laughs> yes, now get the fuck out of here. You know, people find it endearing. I think everyone's like, ah, eh, it's your mom. But I'm like, mom, I am the only one working right now. You gotta yeah. leave me alone. Like yeah. I need to get a sign in the office that's like, don't fucking come in here. She doesn't yeah. get it. So I yeah. realized that we're having to set real boundaries. And if we're going to move back in with her, I'm like, mom, we need to set boundaries. Like, you know, you can't talk to me like I'm a 13 year old, how I do the dishwasher. If I want to do the dishwasher my way, it, it's gotta be it. Like, I don't know what else yeah. to tell you. I'm your roommate now. You're an yeah. adult woman yelling at another adult woman. Is exactly. What you're doing. Yeah. 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 Um, well, that's good. I'm glad you guys are staying safe. I'm glad you're okay. Yeah. You know, 
I'm but glad that come you up with a U-Haul and move during all this in like a couple weeks. So we'll see what Listen, happens. If you need a hand, you know who to call. I honestly would do anything for human contact and I don't care if I get coronavirus doing it. So I, I mean, I, at this point, I feel like the only way you're even going to be allowed to like travel anywhere is if you have already had it. So I'm like, what is the fucking call here? Do I, you know, yeah. like what's I, they're the talking call? about immunity visas now. Yeah. Which, Which I'm like, crazy. that's that's fucking crazy. That feels like George Orwell shit, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I I know I seem like a conservative saying that, but I I truly feel like that. And I'm like, and that's the other thing is like, if you're thinking about this in any kind of a critical way, that's one thing that I've noticed because it's been so politicized. You can't you can't just like look at it critically and be like, um, I'm not really loving the fact that I'm being watched. And that right. like, and the other citizens can like call and tell on me for not like wearing a mask because I left it inside because my puppy's going to shit right now. You right. know, like that kind of a thing really makes me, um, I just feel distrustful of everyone at that point, you know? Oh yeah. I think I, I mean, every day I flip the coin. I'm like, they, you know, Dr. Fauci knows what's going on. We're going to be good. And the other days I'm like, you know, hunker down, get the rice and beans head to the basement. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's every fucking yeah. day. Nobody knows. And I'm, I just, I'm just so surprised. I will tell you this. I do think, and I was just in Asia. I love Asia. And this is nothing towards, you know, Chinese people, but I definitely think that I'm like, I don't trust China at, like as a whole, not the people, but the government. I'm like, are we still going to fuck with China? What's the deal? You know, like what's yeah. going on? Yeah. I'm like, I don't, there's like, nobody can really answer for the fact that there's like nobody can tell where this virus came from there's right like, anyway the point of the matter is we're all gonna die the virus yeah. is coming um yeah. just hunker down and uh you know you can either hunker down or you can face death uh with your mouth open and that's, that's on god that's on god yeah. um yeah. all right really quickly uh yeah at the end of my podcast i do a section called bad advice um, people write in, they ask me questions. We give them horrible advice. Okay. Uh, guys, if you're listening, you can write in to devil's advocate pod dot ATC at gmail.com. And, um, and give me, give me your questions. I'll give you some bad advice with my guests or by myself, depending on what I feel like doing that week. Um, Heather. Yeah, this is, this is our question for this week. Hey, Rosebud, love your work and podcast proud um mahalo beach member over here sorry that's my, for my other podcast fyb um let's get right to it last weekend i had a moment of kindness or weakness and let my dad come visit socially distance outside to grill out he's chronically ill and gets injections that compromise his immune system him and i have had a rocky relationship in the past five years he's an addict and i'm taking i'm talking years and years of this bullshit last weekend when he left i found evidence he did drugs in my bathroom what the fuck naturally confronted him and he denied. Unfortunately, after exchanging stories with my brother, we think he's using meth in addiction to opiates and Ativan. Let me know what Jesus. I should do. The more ridiculous, the better. Making humor out of this shit is a great way for, for me to cope. Jesus Christ, this girl has way too much faith in our ability to make this funny. Um, <laughs> thanks for making me laugh always with your content. Tell Andy Charlie and that teenage adorable bitch mouse I say hi. Sending love, Jessica Rocca. Jessica Rocca. Um, Jessica Rocca. Mm, okay. Bad advice. Yeah. Oh, I should have fucking, I'll probably have to bleep her name out. So, um, but anyway, oh, yeah. yeah. Bad advice. Her dad's using drugs in the bathroom. Bad advice. What I would say immediately. I mean, he's a lost cause, right? We just burn his house down with a minute. You know what I think we do is you get, okay. This is what I'm going to tell her to do. I'm going to say, go get all the drugs that you suspect him of using. Yeah. You, you gather them up in a bag. You can put it in a, in a, in a little, you know, knapsack tied right. to a stick. Oh, um, I love this. Like drop a traveler. Them. Drop mm -hmm. them, you know, like Hansel and Gretel style all the way into the door of the nearest rehab. And that, oh, is how you find out, A, what he's addicted to. Okay. Because right. you set out three different trails. You have Ativan, meth, opiates. Okay. It's going to be an expensive fucking project. You're probably going to go broke and then not be able to pay for the rehab, but you will have the answer to the mysteries that you seek. Okay. Right? Can I just be honest? This is still good advice. What you just said was actually <laughs> good advice. 
I thought you meant like go the complete opposite, like tell her the worst thing she's ever heard, which would be burn your dad <laughs> alive in his house. I didn't realize like, like dropping that. I mean, that's leaving bread crumbs to a solution, Rose, but what the fuck? <laughs> that's a great idea. I'd be like, call the cops, set his house on fire, gang, like what? <laughs> I know. I love that you immediately were like, you know what? Burn your dad to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like what the Burn fuck? Burn your drug addict father to the ground. I love it. I mean, I'm feeling, I got crazies in the family, trust and believe, you know what I'm saying? A little extended, <laughs> but close enough. And I'm getting these phone calls from a crazy aunt at like 4 a.m. when she's taking all the pills. You know, yeah. she's just like, Heather, you need a website. I'm like, I know, let's call her Aunt Lisa. I know Aunt Lisa, I got a website. You know, yeah. like, I'm just kidding. I got, I, we got an addict in the family. I'm like, I don't know what to do either. What I the fuck is the advice? You know, the best, I or here's another, this is actually bad advice. You could, um, it's not, it's bad advice in terms of fixing anything for your dad, but you could start an Instagram account and film him uh, stealing drugs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very My drug um, addict dad. David Hasselhoff, you know, when yes. he ate the cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you start selling ads for rehabs because, you know, they're, they're in, dirty business i'll be honest yeah. they're not great yeah. people either i've heard and, that uh, yeah and uh that's i think you should just capitalize right i mean here's the thing if it's like the guy who bought all that hand sanitizer on amazon like be that guy but with drugs yes yes you know yes that's another but, yes yeah mm -hmm. we are fucking we're scammers smart scammers <laughs> literally scammers oh okay stop 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 <laughs> I know. Between the cats and the dogs, you can't get a moment of peace anyways. It's like, what are we going to do? Yeah. I can't zoom outside because the fucking chemtrails are in the air. What are we going to do, Rosebud? <laughs> what are we going to do? I love you so much. I'm, thank you I for doing you. this. It's Thanks really great to me. see you. And I know so we're both busy, you. so we haven't been able to chat as much. But I, we have to chat more because I, I miss do. you. And I truly... Every time I talk to you, I'm in a better mood. So listen, come over to my apartment when I get back. I know where you've been. You know, yeah. like at this point, it is what it fucking is, dude. It is what it is. Um, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, listen, I'm still gonna go out on tour at some point. It's the farewell tour, which is ironic that we <laughs> called it that. So, so funny that you called it that. I know, right? We'll be rescheduling dates um, for later this fall, and I'm sure at the top of next year. And listen to my podcast, the Absolutely Not Podcast. And until then. You know, stay woke, America. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful coming from someone in Atlanta. It's just great yeah. to hear. You're I'm doing what I can. <laughs> the one person in Atlanta, stay woke. Um, yeah. All right. I should say the one white person in Atlanta. Uh, yeah. You guys, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for tuning in every week. Thanks for uh, rating and reviewing the podcast. Um, you can subscribe to it on uh, on iTunes and Spotify and also... Follow us on Instagram, devilsadvocatepod.atc. And um, that's it. You guys, stay safe out there. Thanks, Heather. Thanks, girl. Um, hold on a second. I'm going to stop the recording.